Talking about U.S.-India relations under Obama, I think it's important to set a context. Um, you know, the U.S. and India had a somewhat estranged relationship during the Cold War. And without going into too much detail, um, after 9-11, this, this relationship fundamentally changed. Uh, it's actually begun a few years in the late 90s, uh, slight opening began. But after 9-11, it really opened up. The Bush administration pushed very hard, and the Indians reciprocated. We really took this relationship to new heights. Uh, what really should have been a natural partnership in many people's eyes was very much gummed up by India's uh, closeness with the Soviet Union during the Cold War. So a um, number of avenues of cooperation opened up defense. Uh, the big one that most people know about was the U.S.-India nuclear deal, which was signed in, in 2005. Uh, it took until about 2008 until this thing really uh, bore fruit and passed through Congress here. But much of the Bush years were preoccupied by strengthening this partnership and then eventually the U.S.-India nuclear deal. So the question when Obama came to power was, how are they going to be able to sustain this momentum in the relationship, this new partnership that we've built with India? How, how can we keep the energy there uh, now that the U.S.-India nuclear deal has passed and we're moving on to a more you know, mature part of our relationship? And uh, things have not gone well. Um, you know, I should say to Obama's credit, he, he had uh, Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh here for the first state dinner last year. And President Obama will visit India this year, November of this year. Uh, we've initiated a strategic dialogue with them for the first time, putting them somewhat on the same level as China. But uh, far more areas where uh, problems have arisen. And, and sometimes it has a lot more to do with the optics than the actual tangible parts of the relationship. But particularly with the Indians, optics matter a lot. So I mean, you can start out with Obama as a senator being somewhat hesitant about the nuclear deal. Uh, Indians, you know, perceived this very closely as an attempt to torpedo the deal, some of the, uh, an amendment he tried to add to it while uh, as a senator. And even before he became president, there was some talk that he would try and appoint a special envoy to Kashmir. Some thought Richard Holbrook might take this position. The Indians are obviously very sensitive. Uh, Kashmir's disputed tract of territory with Pakistan. Any attempt by the United States to intervene and mediate this conflict is viewed as an affront to their sovereignty. Now, he, he didn't end up, uh, he ended up taking uh, the Kashmir profile away from Holbrook. But again, this, this set relations off on a bad foot to begin with. Then uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, both on their inaugural visits through Asia, skipped over India you know, obviously paid much attention to China and elsewhere. And it's just the sense of being snubbed started to, to build up in India. And why is he not placing as much emphasis on us? And in turn, uh, cozying up to China. A, a lot of the problem in India is that they perceive uh, the Obama administration as being very favorable towards China. And the administration didn't help this. Uh, Obama, who summit in November of 2009, they issued a statement inviting China to play a larger role in the security of South Asia. So India is wondering, why is our ally, the United States, asking China, our competitor, and some would say enemy, to play a, a bigger role in our backyard? This is our, our neighborhood. Um, so another place where they, they felt snubbed. Um, the administration's foreign policy agenda includes emphasis on places where we don't necessarily, or, or this administration doesn't necessarily agree with India. Global warming, uh, CTBT, uh, fizzle material cutoff treaty. These are places uh, where, you know, the Bush administration did not place a great deal of emphasis, but the Obama administration has in places where we disagree with India. Um, so, you know, just yet another place where uh, the Obama administration has highlighted uh, er there's only a few areas of disagreement and has not sufficiently catered to areas of cooperation or tried to push cooperation harder where it could have. Um, Afghanistan, to a degree, is a much bigger topic. But there has been some divergence here in, in the sense that the Indians, perhaps more than anyone else, are worried that the administration here will cut and run. They obviously have a huge stake in what happens in Afghanistan. They have a huge stake in whether or not the Taliban ends up taking over Afghanistan. Um, the Indians were, together with the Russians, 
and others in Central Asia, uh, the original sponsors of the Northern Alliance before the United States came in. And so they've, they've opposed the Taliban since day one. They don't like Islamist extremism. They're a victim of, of Islamist terrorism and have been uh, for decades now. So they are very concerned about the administration striking a deal with the Taliban and allowing the Taliban to come to power and allowing Afghanistan to be a base for Islamist extremism. And um, they, they have been opposed, vocally opposed, to efforts to negotiate with the Taliban, perhaps more so than anyone else. Uh, so there's another area of disagreement. So uh, it, I suppose, uh, you know, we're at sort of a critical juncture here. Um, we had so much momentum building during the Bush years, and it looked as if we really would build this really solid partnership in the 21st century with a rising power. I mean, this is going to be a superpower uh, in our generation. And to build a strong partnership with them from the ground up at the very beginning and foster this, we, we have so many common interests on, on the world stage. Um, you know, just it would, have, <laughs> it would have been extremely productive. And, and there's really a concern now that, that this momentum risk being lost under the Obama administration, you know, there's certainly plenty of people in India who were skeptical of partnering with the U.S. to begin with, and this gives them a, a, uh, more than enough ammunition. Uh, just to transition then to India's national security challenges, I, I won't go into a great deal about Pakistan. Most of you know that India and Pakistan are mortal enemies, have been since 1947. Um, Talks between India and Pakistan, which have been off and on over the years, uh, were largely on hold after Mumbai. It was Mumbai attacks in November of 2008 by Pakistani-based uh, terrorists. Killed 170 people. It was India's 9-11. They put talks on hold. The last six months, these talks have slowly uh, come back online. Actually, there was a round of foreign ministers' talks yesterday that did not go well. The Pakistani foreign minister claimed after the talks that the Indian foreign minister was on the phone with New Delhi the whole time, uh, asking for permission to say or sign things. It, it did not go over well. Um, but two parts I would like to talk about India's national security are, uh, I think, very important. Uh, the first being more important to us is China. Uh, India is as concerned with China's rise as we are, if not more concerned. These two fought a war in 1962, a short war, but a traumatic one. Um, China still claims uh, about 90,000 square miles of Indian territory uh, in its northeast. And in the past few years, tensions over these border territories have, have been on the rise. Uh, Chinese border incursions up to a mile into Indian territory, uh, 50, 60, 70, 80 times a year now. Um, China in 2006, its uh, ambassador to India said that the entire state of Arunachal Pradesh, which is where this territory lies, is, is actually Chinese territory. They're calling it South Tibet. Um, considerable amount of attention along the border, particularly last year. Um, India, in turn, has decided to raise two new mountain divisions and send these to the border. It's basing its most advanced aircraft now. Uh, the Sukhois in the northeast, in Assam, close to the uh, disputed region. Much of India's military modernization, which is massive, huge plans for the next 10 years, uh, $100 billion, is geared towards China. And they've recently revi actually revised their military doctrine explicitly to prepare for a two-front war, which is you know, no secret who they're aiming that towards. Um, China has been making inroads into uh, South Asia. They're building partnerships in Nepal and Sri Lanka, Burma. Their string of pearl strategy, where they're uh, investing in naval posts along the Indian Ocean, has India very concerned, as well as the US. Uh, China's strong partnership with Pakistan. China has supplied Pakistan with weapons and even uh, nuclear material, although not anymore. Uh, Although, actually, this is particularly new, uh, China very recently announced that it would be building two new nuclear power plants in Pakistan. This is in contravention with agreements when it joined the Nuclear Suppliers Group in 2004. You're not allowed to supply Pakistan with this nuclear technology. Pakistan is not a member of the Non-Proliferation Treaty. 
China announced that it's going to build two new nuclear plants there anyway. And it claims that it informed the nuclear suppliers group it was going to do this when it joined in 04, and they signed the deal years ago, and they're just going to do it now. Nobody buys that. This is actually a test for the Obama administration, who says that they will not support this and has a capability to block it at the nuclear suppliers group. Uh, it's not clear yet how hard they will fight this, but I think it's a, a real test. Um, so China is on the rise. India feels increasingly encircled. Uh, not all, but many in New Delhi are acutely aware of the threat China could pose. And, you know, this is an area of commonality with India. Uh, China has been hacking into India's uh, embassies across the world, stealing defense secrets. I mean, all this sounds very familiar. So a <laughs> number of areas of potential cooperation with India on China. And the second thing I just want to address briefly is actually a, a domestic problem of India, a security challenge. It's um, a Maoist insurgency. You don't hear a ton about it here, but it's a, a, a very big issue for them. Just in the past month, these Maoists, they are um, indigenous, largely tribal people with a communist ideology. Um, started in, insurgency started in 1967. It's been wage, raging for 40 years, off and on. Much more uh, recently it's been on. But just in the past month, they've ambushed Indian police forces, killing 74, 25, 26, you know, I mean, the worst month in Afghanistan, we, we didn't lose 74 people. And this is in a single ambush. They derailed a train a few weeks ago. They killed 150 people. Uh, now, India is a huge country, but, I mean, these are significant numbers. Uh, over 900 killed last year. Uh, so India is at a state of war with uh, these Maoists. They're called Naxalites because the uh, insurgency started in the town of Naxalbari. But... Uh, India has not taken it particularly seriously. They've been using state police forces to c control it, been very um, hesitant to use the military and, and air force. Uh, but they're coming to the realization that police forces are not going to cut it anymore. And the prime minister, actually a few years ago, described this as the greatest security threat to his country. Uh, but the slow machinations of government over there have not... Uh, applied themselves to this problem to the degree it should be, and it, it's been getting worse and worse and worse. Um, so I guess I'll end on that, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them. Thank you. Um, can I just quickly ask you to clarify this? What extent is, uh, they're Maoists, but to what extent are they tied into China? Do you see an obvious link? It, it's more ideo ideological than practical. They have more extensive links, actually, to Nepal's Maoists, although even those are questionable. Uh, to a degree, China has tried to distance itself. I mean, these are hardcore ideological Maoists, you know, and some in China, China now are, you Don't know. Cut the mustard. Right.